we were all very patriotic. Everybody was clamoring to do something connected with war service. And I guess I just, it was the thing to do. We were at war with an enemy, and I was going to do the best I could to defeat that enemy. I did my bit. Everybody who served did his part. I did my part. That's about all I can say. I just absolutely wanted to fly combat missions. And I still remember returning after our first mission, which was not an easy one, and I asked our commanding officer if we were going to fly, fly the next day. I was ready to go. I was really pumped up about the whole thing. World War II. Of all the wars, it remains the most etched into American lore. Seventy years after Germany and Japan surrendered, movies and books about World War II are still being produced and written. At air shows, World War II aircraft attract the largest crowds. Even the youngest generations know the names. Churchill, Eisenhower, Hitler, Patton, Roosevelt. There was only a few people of our whole graduating class that didn't go into the service. And if you were enlisted, you could pick your service. And if you got drafted, they put you wherever you uh, they wanted you, and so I thought I'd like to fly. And especially when I look back, we, we were all kids. The median age of a fighter pilot, I would say, was 20 years old, and that was that's good. I think you, you, at that age, you think you're invincible, you know, and you you do things that maybe you wouldn't do after you were a little older and a little smarter. We always said, as, as a fighter pilot, if they don't get us on the first round with flak, they're not going to get us. Why is this war, a war that took millions of lives and destroyed so much of Europe and Japan, so steadfastly popular and viewed with such affection? The answers were revealed on August 15, 2015, with the Aviation Heritage Center of Wisconsin and the Sharon S. Richardson Community Hospice hosted a celebration event commemorating the 70th anniversary of the ending of World War II. At Sharon Richardson Hospice, we take great pride in caring for veterans at their end of life journey. Attending were 43 World War II veterans, all in their 90s, as well as 600 people who came to thank them for their service. The veterans spoke humbly of duty, honor, country, sacrifice, and of an era when threats to American freedoms and liberties were not excused or appeased, but instead they were soundly defeated. Machine gun, give me a break, get over, get over, fire over my head. So they fired the first burst. It went right into the ground about two inches from my right leg. I could feel the slugs as they went into the ground. I kept screaming, raise it, raise it, you're too low. You're right in line. Yeah. When I got to California, my basic training camp, my commanding officer looked at my sheet, what I had listed on there, and there it shows that I got two children. And he says, you, you enlisted with two children home? I said, no, sir, I was drafted. Yeah. They're not drafting men yet with children at your age. Well, what do I do now? So I went, stayed in the service. So I'm gone three years. Attendees from age 10 to age 97 listened to the voices of World War II soldiers, seamen and aviators, men who may soon be gone. Boy and Cub Scouts gave them handwritten notes thanking them for their sacrifices. The colors were presented and retired. A student choir sang. A 21 rifle salute was observed. Fire. 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 
Buglers played taps. Tears were shed. World War II T-6 aircraft flew a final salute. Everybody was on board to win the war. Rosie the Riveter. The women went to work in the, in the stores, in the, in the industry, because the men were off fighting the war. The day revealed that World War II remains idolized because it represents more than the defeat of ruthless enemies on opposite sides of the world. It symbolizes a generation of men and women who cherished American ideals as crafted by the Founding Fathers and was willing to do whatever it took, including die, to protect them. A selfless generation like this may never happen again. When I was drafted into the Army, I already had three brothers in service. And my father went down to the draft board to see if he could get an exemption based on the fact that he already had three sons in the Army and I was the youngest. And I was scared to death he might succeed. <laughs> I thought, oh, Christ, I don't want to stay. I want to go. There are certain things that we are bound to do, such as serving in the service during a war. Um, it's, a, it's, it's a duty, and it's a privilege, because we live in a pretty good place. If fought today, World War II would be controversial and deemed impossible to win. But to the greatest generation of the 1940s, there was never any doubt. America had to fight, and America must triumph. Because of these men and women, Europe and Asia were liberated and dictators vanquished. But it was not without cost. 450,000 American boys never saw their friends and families again. Those who made it back will never forget their buddies who didn't. And neither should we. And like almost everybody of that generation who served in the Second World War, they have one thing in common that I've noticed. They're all very humble. They're all very, we just were doing our duty. We were called to duty. We had enemies that were threatening the freedoms and the liberties that we know and hold dear in this nation, and we had to go do something about it, and we did. The youngest World War II veteran we had here today was 90 years old. The oldest one was 97 years old, and he actually got up and took the microphone, as you saw, and uh, made a, a wonderful monologue about his experiences in this, during the Second World War. Out of all those wars, it's World War II that still has cemented its place in American lore. We're still writing books about World War II. We're still making movies about World War II. It was a generation where people were proud of being an American where there was such a thing as good and evil, and there was an enemy. Germany and Japan at that time were the bad guys, and you could say they were the bad guys. You didn't have to excuse their actions. We didn't have to understand why maybe they didn't like America. So much of that goodness, so much of that patriotism, so much of that heart and soul that you saw extended from everybody in the country, regardless of your religion, your race, your color, your ethnicity, was all for one cause, and that was the United States of America. That's not happening anymore, and I think many of us miss that and long for those days.